it's uh, great to have you with us today for our harvest theme for Time to Wind Down. So my name's Andy Cops. I am your resident storyteller for today and it's with great pleasure to introduce you to the rest of the team and I'm going to let one of our wonderful team members introduce our special guest today. So without further ado, let me hand over to my partner in crime or partners in crime, I should say, Michelle Cheen. <laughs> Michelle, to you first. Thanks, Andy. Um, and hello, Gerard and Tino. Tino is our very, very, very special guest today, all the way from Stellenbosch in the middle of harvest time. Um, Tino studies agriculture, which is quite fitting, I think, for our theme. And Tino is someone that I've known for quite a while. Um, well, I know his family very well, I must say. I saw Tino last when he was a little boy <laughs> um, running around in Swellendam. <laughs> And um, I know his mom and his aunt very well. So Tino is a very talented Afrikaans singer from Harare originally that um, grew up mostly in Swellendam, my hometown. Went to school mm. at Oakdale, if I'm not mistaken, Tino. And uh, has a love for farming, rugby, Afrikaans mm. and all the things that we like, I think. <laughs> Amazing. All right. That's a lovely, lovely introduction, Michelle. So thank you. But thank Tino, you so before, much. Before Michelle. I bring you to the stage, I just want to go to our other team member, Gerard Perold. Gerard, <laughs> would you would you like to just give a, a hello to everyone that um, perhaps is joining Time to Wine Down for the first time? Because you are yeah. our resident wine maestro, um, <laughs> and I know Michelle said um, Tino is is joining us from Stellenbosch. Where is Stellenbosch, Gerard? Can you, oh. can you explain to those that may not know South Africa all too well? Uh, good afternoon, everybody. And it's lovely again to be with, with the Time to Wind Down team to do our little uh, first day chats. Um, and uh, welcome to Tino. I'm looking really forward to hear a little bit more about yourself. And um, we all have some fun today, that's for sure. Um, so let's um, go to your question, Stellenbosch. So where is Stellenbosch? Well, for a start, it's in South Africa, um, because Time to Wind Down is all about so celebrating South Africa, wine, food, story, and music. So um, uh, Stellenbosch is a lovely little town uh, in the coast, or clear, close to the coast down in Cape Town, uh, or close to Cape Town. Um, and um, Stellenbosch is um, one of our famous places for wine. So um, we'll, we'll find out more. But um, yeah, I think there's a few quiz questions around Stellenbosch as well but comes later. So tell so. us about the quiz, because this is new. This is something yes, we did yes. for, we, for we the first decided, time. We've decided as a team to um, to throw something else into our little half an hour, 45 minute chat on a first day and lunchtime. Um, and um, we decided why not pressure our guests a little bit more by asking them a few quiz questions. And um, But uh, yes, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to that. And um, Tina already said earlier on to us that he is um, um, quite good under pressure. So we will see. We'll see. <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> uh, I, I know, Tina, I'm coming, I'm coming to you now. So, so just on the note of what Michelle and Gerard have both said, it's great to be with us today. It's one of the things that we started probably two months ago we started to invite invite a a guest speaker and but you're the first musician that we that we have joining us so this is exciting because we've had musicians take part in our events previously but not as part of this lunchtime session so yeah we're excited and i know i did ask you how do i pronounce your your surname because it is not sing <laughs> even though you're a musician and you love singing it is not sing it is singe am i right yeah sing it perfect singe. correct yeah now now, now tell me because i know michelle said you your family originate from zimbabwe uh, from harare so do you speak you love afrikaans but do you speak any of the african languages are you fluent in any of the Afri african languages um yes uh and yeah, i am actually fluent in um shona which is my mother tongue um, from Zimbabwe. And yeah, there are a few words and stuff that I don't understand, but uh, it's the, the harder words, the words that my 
parents and stuff who use and stuff. Okay. But yeah, um, I'm, I'm, I can't say I'm fluent in Shona, English, and Afrikaans. Um, what is the word called for it again? Trilingual, if I'm right. Because <laughs> I, I, I just so, wondered, because I know that, so for my wife and I, we live in the UK and we've got three, one could say, British children. British. And my wife and I use Afrikaans as a secret language because they don't understand oh. what it is. <laughs> um, and I just wondered if, if maybe your parents never taught you Shona and they use that as a secret yeah. language so they can talk about you without yeah, you knowing think... what they're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I think as a toddler, I could pick up the language um, very quickly and easily. So, yeah, that's where I learned my Shona from my parents and everything. And also some of my Zim um, friends that I, that I have. But, yeah... Um, when I'm at home, I usually speak in Shona, um, mix it with English now and then. But the funny thing is, my parents don't understand Afrikaans, so yeah, I can I use that as a secret language when I want to <laughs> say something they mustn't hear. <laughs> so why why if I'm gonna I'm, I want I want to know why Afrikaans? What made you want to write your music and sing in Afrikaans as opposed to your mother tongue? I would say. I grew up in an Afrikaans environment. Um, I was English in primary school, grade one to seven. But then I got the wonderful opportunity to go to uh, World Lambo School, Oakdale, which is situated in Riversdale. And it is pure Afrikaans. And I knew it was a, it was a risk that I was, not a risk actually, but it was a mountain that I had to climb because uh, I've never had all my subjects and stuff in Afrikaans. And I was supposed to make that move from English to pure Afrikaans. And I struggled a bit academically and also to fit in and stuff with um, um, friends and the environment. And um, after a while, I would say uh, a year, um, things got together and I fell in love with the language. And that's when I started with um, listening to Afrikaans music too. And I, I feel music is a, is a language on its own and um, I can, yeah, I can relate with it. Especially in Afrikaans. Now, remind me, you where did you grow up? Where in South Africa? Um, I grew up in the small town Swellendam. I'm sure that's where um, Michelle is. Now, now th this is where I'm a little bit confused, right? Because as far yeah. as I understand, your first single, you actually recorded that, or you did the video recording of that yeah. track in Boxburg, which is where I'm from. <laughs> On the east strand of Johannesburg. <laughs> oh, Johannesburg. What made you choose? Like living in Swellendam, you had the beautiful backdrop of, of vineyards and mountains yeah. and whatnot, but you choose mine dumps. Um, <laughs> not that you had that in the background, but I'm curious, why Boxburg? Mm. Um, so the record label where I signed at last year, now end of the year, uh, Funk Musik, is situated there in, in Boxburg. So we decided we're just going to um, do the shoot there at Eche Janssen, um, there in Boxburg. But yeah, I like the setting and I'm just glad people um, do like the video too. So everything went well. Oh, cool. It is a beautiful, beautiful, but busy, busy town. I don't know if it's a town or city, but yeah. Anything that's bigger than Swelling Down for me is a city. <laughs> Which is nice to South Africa. Yeah. Oh. Busy indeed. I mean, my family are still yeah. there. I think they're probably watching oh, this as well from, from oh, Boxburg. Perfect. So. Perfect. Now, <laughs> now Michelle, I know that we have quite a few questions that have come in. Um, people are sending questions. We have our own questions. So, and I know we've got quizzes. Right, just going back to the quiz. How, what, what, what are we, what are we, when are we going to throw in some of the questions for the quiz? I don't know. Uh, this is time to wind down. We don't have a plan. Yeah, we <laughs> well, the plan was you're supposed to have a glass of wine, and I, 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 I failed. I failed miserably. In, in <laughs> yeah, a glass you can have some. I'll, I'll, I'll get another glass. Oh, this okay, is here a you beautiful go. Hold, thing. Hold, take it, take it, take it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> yeah, and 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 uh, Tino's got to go and play rugby, so I, I don't think he's going to be partaking <laughs> no. any wine at the moment. But yeah. Michelle, you, what what questions have we got that we could throw to Tino? So Harold, very studiously. Um, got some really nice questions together that um, I think falls into most of Tino's um, interests. The first one is around Stellenbosch. So, as we all know, Stellenbosch is very well known for wine, but Dion Engelbrecht 
arrived in Akerstadt in 2011 and in tw June 2012 had his first beer kegs ready to pour. What is Stellenbosch's first craft brewery called? Yo, back to school now. <laughs> I must say I do like beer. Um, if I go out and stop, my go-to drink is is beer but now i'm just wondering what is Stellenbosch's first beer craft called um and i and i must say harold only it, knew this because they sponsored some tv um ads so yeah. i think they're yeah. quite yeah so if you if you've ever watched uh commons gaan camp of commons camp yeah uh, on cake Net, if I, was... yeah <laughs> if i say St stalin brow am i wrong <laughs> well done <laughs> Got it. Yes. <laughs> Good job. So the second one, I know you'll know. Name the Afrikaans songwriter and rock and blues singer that got his name from a famous poet and painter, Brayton Breitenbach. That's a very hard question you're asking me there, Michelle. <laughs> well, I'll, I, go, I, I, I'll, go, <laughs> I'll go with the unblom. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's a backstory here yeah, because Tino does a lot of covers by um, mm. Jan Blom in, and I think yeah. it's, it's quite was... interesting the story about Jan Blom isn't it Tino mm. and, and, and how his connection came from yes Breiton Breitenbach yeah. yeah so no, Breiton say... Breitenbach used Jan Blom as his what was it? Hail Mom yeah but I would say yeah just to add I know that he's what is really um, my inspiration when it comes to, to to music, but not only music, but just like personality too. I actually met him um, I think like three weeks ago, the uh, funk at Kenning's aunt. And yeah, I um, really look up to him, not just in the music industry, but as a person to one of the main people. Um, not only me, person. but others can look up to you. Yeah. yeah. I, I actually now, when we were getting the questions together, I went and looked up um, and read up on him a bit. He went into the Air Force after school and then became an IT guy. And yeah, very, yeah. very interesting. <laughs> very also, clever, very intelligent. Yeah. 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 What is also interesting about Jan Blom's music is he's bringing a lot of poetry in his music. Mm. And the name fits really well by using mm. Jan Blom. Uh, you know, Breiton Breitenbach being a poet yeah. is quite nice. And poet, what's the word? Come on, Andy. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's so, I must say, there's so many songs that not only me, but other people too can relate to, but in different ways because of the um, way he writes and the way like he composes his songs. Too. Um, that's why I say he's really one of the most talented um, people I've ever met um, in my life. And how was it to meet him in person? <laughs> Yo, I don't want to lie to you, Michelle. I must say, I didn't want to, I didn't want the hype to be like too big because I don't want to yum bloom, yum bloom, yum bloom. So I kept cool. Um, I actually met him like on, on our way to Pretoria because we were on the same flight. Um, I think we were sitting just like on the, you know, just behind me or something like that. But I didn't want to stand up and greet him on the flight because, yeah, it would just look too, <laughs> uh, too much, but too much. But I met him at the Fong uh, Kenning's on there, the Atterbury Theatre. And yeah, it was it was an amazing moment. It's something that I won't forget. That's amazing. Um, I think that's one of the first songs I saw Tino perform because he did uh, Facebook Lives, and it, it was it Grundtrei. That was uh, one of the kind of the your most mm. famous. Yeah. So I, yeah. <laughs> yeah so with, uh, I think Kruntre was the first video that I actually uploaded on on the socials I did that one out of one of my friends that I'm studying with here at Eisenberg um, Josh Scholes and yeah when we met each other we just spoke about music and what type of music do you like and stuff and we found out that we do like the same type of music the same type of vibe and we decided to to do a cover together and yeah um just other friends motivated us to just post it on YouTube so that others can have a listen to. And yeah, that's where everything started, if I can put it there in that way. I want to I want to bring it back to something that Gerard mentioned, and we, we, we talked about this quite a bit already, is is the poet side of things when we're, we're, as a musician. 
And this is a very important thing because when you write, whether it's prose or poetry or even the lyrics of a song, mm. it's in effect a poem. And it, it, it's interesting when I meet a lot of men, right, guys that that love music. <laughs> but when I say to them, and yeah. then I find out that they, they write poems, but they're so cautious about, oh, no, 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 I don't want to share it out. And I'm going, why not? This stuff's awesome. Yeah. And I've met so many guys awesome. that don't share their poetry because they, they, they think that it's, um, I don't know, they, they feel a little embarrassed. And mm. I sort of think to them, I sort of want to say to them, right, if I give you a guitar, will you sing that for me? And they'll go, no, I can't play the guitar. I said, right, then just sing that poem for me. Sing that poem for me. Rap it. Do whatever, right? Do something with it. But that needs to Either be Either way, shared. you're going to have to perform with, yeah. I, I must say, it is quite true what you're saying, Annie, because I've been in the same um, little boat, if I can put it that way. Um, when I write, I don't have, I think, I feel I must still find my writing style, but I, I'm still learning the music theory too and stuff. But when I write... I don't realize that I'm writing about love the whole time. And to be honest, <laughs> I haven't been like in a real love relationship, but I do write about relationships and stuff. Um, but for me, it's not about being in a relationship and something you've uh, been through. It can be uh, an imagination to something that you're seeing and an image that you're seeing in your head too. And if I feel like it's something that I must put on, on paper, I will, I will definitely go for it. Because it'll mean something somewhere um, for someone. Yeah, no, awesome. Very well put. <laughs> well, I, I'm feeling for you though, because I can't answer any of these questions. So I, I really feel for you, Tino. Um, Michelle, go on. This be one, nasty. You, Get, throw another one at know. Tino. This one you will know. Um, <laughs> so, question three. No, sorry, the next one. This one you might not know because I didn't know this when I was a Marty. <laughs> So the students at Stellenbosch University are nicknamed Martys. Why? Where does this come from? Why are the students at Stellenbosch named Martys? Mm. The only thing that I can, I can think of now is the tomato because it's tomati, but that doesn't make sense. I don't know if it's something... <laughs> if it yeah, has to do with something you're right you're right, it is right? Tomato, tomato. Stuff, but because, i'm gonna pass this from michelle yeah. <laughs> it's fair enough but you you halfway there um it's because of the colors of the sports jacket. halfway there yeah <laughs> uh, okay yeah it makes sense it makes sense yeah. <laughs> at yeah, least i, I know that Marty, and i didn't know that <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to share this with most of my friends. I also don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You're, going to you're going to learn wise things coming along to time. To well, yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There's plenty to learn from, from, from us in, in, in time to wise down. And then I think my, yeah. my, also, my dad played a bit of rugby for Marty's. Um, so, yeah. Oh, you, nice. you, like, you like playing rugby and you, Tina? Yeah. Um, I'm currently playing rugby at. Uh, um, at Marty's for the young guns under 20. Um, and I am enjoying it. I must say I've got a big passion for rugby too. I've been playing rugby since I was six. So it's something that I've been carrying with me my whole life long. I must say it gets, gets tough and interesting sometimes, but yeah, like I said, I like being under pressure. I like being tested. And yeah, I am enjoying it. Well, I'm, I'm laughing a little bit because I'm actually, if we had this show two weeks ago, I would have been a little bit like that with a massive blue eye because um, I still play rugby <laughs> myself as well, um, even though I think my parents... Oh, that's... Nice. Stop. <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> I, I enjoyed the game too much and also started to play when I was very little. And, mm. um, uh, in, yeah, yeah, and uh, 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 it's just a fantastic game. And um, mm. yeah, so... I, I was, when I saw, um, when I had a little look and read about you, I thought, saw, yeah, cool. Yeah. Up to Michelle, and you're playing rugby, and it's like, yes, yeah. it's, it's quite, it, it no. be quite nice to to hear <laughs> where your love from, for rugby came from and stuff. So, and if you, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and in South Africa. Yeah, I, I think um, the love for rugby started, um, yeah. It's it's that South African internet, isn't it? Well, well <laughs> both yeah, sides. Yeah, <laughs> like load shedding or something. <laughs> <laughs> K 
Okay, should we do this? I know Andy will know this question. I'm not sure if you know, Will, but let's see. So Pinotage um, is a big favorite topic of us, of ours, obviously. Um, Gerard is, is quite mm. well versed in the history of it. <laughs> um, and what is what is Pinotage a cross between? So there's two grapes um, that it was crossed and to create Pinotage. And what were those two grapes? Oh, pinotage. Because I didn't know, yeah, I didn't know pinotage like the wine, mm. but the grapes that were crossed to get the pinotage itself. Yeah. And yeah, they usually talk a lot about it like, here at Osenberg um, in Stellenbosch where I'm studying. But yeah, I'm going to pause this one. I know grapes, but I don't know like grapes in, in depth, if, if I can put it that way. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I'm sure Andy will be I able think, to help No, but me. hold on. Before be, to answer this question, I think there's a wonderful story of where those grapes came from, and I think Gerard, <laughs> I know we we celebrated Pinotage back in October last year for the International Pinotage Day, but can you maybe just share the short story from your great grandfather about well, the two grape types? <laughs> yeah, of course. Again, I don't know if you uh, my, my internet is also playing up here in Somerset in, in the UK, so it's a bit um, dodgy. So hopefully, you can hear me. You can hear me. All, um, good. It's, it's, oh, all good, so that's fine. So, actually, I've got Pinotage in my glass today. Um, one of um, Isel's um, Mentos Range Pinotage wines. So I thought that would be appropriate for questions so coming uh, like that. KWV. Wait. So, so we're talking the mentor is a KWV one. Yeah. Yes, and it is from Stalingrad. Who's Zell, Gerard? Because there's people that are coming on this for the first time. Please remind our Zell. wonderful audience. Anybody would know Izel. Well, there might be someone that doesn't. <laughs> yeah. But they will yeah, now. <laughs> well, Izel, of course, is the beautiful winemaker at KWV down in Stalingrad, or actually in Pal. But this grapes, this Pinotage came from Stalingrad. Um, but Pinotage itself has got a lovely story and, uh, and, and a good heritage of mine, really. But um, in, in a nutshell, basically, my great-grandfather uh, in 1924 um, took two plants that he brought back from Europe. And um, the one was a Pinot Noir and the other one a Senso, or at the time also called Hermitage. And what he did was he took the two plants and brushed them together for the pollination. And from that pollination came four seeds that he planted in his back garden in Stellenbosch. Um, and from those four seedlings comes all the pinotage in the world. So that's, in a nutshell. Wow. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Yeah, but I'm sure that that was years You know what's even more amazing, Before Tino? my time. Tino, what's, even, what's, even, what's even more amazing is how those two plants got into South Africa. You see, you see, Herod's <laughs> left out a very, very important part because there's oh, a story yeah. <laughs> in how they came to, in, into SA. To well, South, well, South Africa. <laughs> we think. Well, yeah, a true we South think. African way, I would say. <laughs> but, uh, um, no, yeah. actually, of course, um, uh, it, it was my, my great grandfather did quite a lot in the, in the industry and in, for South Africa itself as well. And, in the early 1900s, um, he was asked by the Cape government to um, go and do some research work uh, around the world because he was the most educated viticulturist in the country. Sure. So on a boat he got because of those years, you couldn't get on a plane. So it's quite long journeys that he needed to take. Um, and he, he did this research work and he went over to Europe and around and he brought back into South Africa about 177 different grape varieties um, that we do some fantastic wine with in South Africa. But the two plants actually from the story that's been told through the family, I mean, I, I, I have never read it, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know exactly, but uh, the, the story goes that um, he had a cane that he was walking with. Um, and um, he, he took the two plants, he unscrewed a cane and took the two plants and put it in his cane screw it back up and got on the boat and back he came with the two plants. So, um, yes, <laughs> even more interesting. <laughs> so yeah, so yeah. it's a great, lovely grape variety. Um, mm. and, um, the winemakers in South Africa, like Izel from KWV in Stellenbosch or 
in, in Pau, uh, makes in fantastic Pau. wines of it. And today, actually, I'm having the Mentos wines here because they had their new release, a uh, vintage release lately. And I suppose we are the, talking a little bit about harvest because over the last month or so and, and still going on is the harvest in South Africa. And very, very important because last Friday I had a private tasting with a, a wine group uh, close to me. Um, and um, someone asked me about the vintage. How important is the vintage? And it is massively important because it depends on what you're going to get that, that here because our African winemakers um, doesn't always follow a recipe. They are a bit more open to, to play around and experiment. And that's how this one comes along as well, experimenting with the grapes in the, in the winery. But the harvest is, is, is quite, uh, this here is quite, um, it's a little bit smaller actually than, than uh, for example, in 2020, I think we had about 1.45 million tons of grapes harvested for wine. And this year is about 80,000 tons less, um, roughly. So it's a smaller harvest actually, but we had a fantastic winter and, and the winter rainfalls were really, really done us really well. And summer came a little bit later this year. Uh, I remember speaking to my parents and they were still uh, in December going, it's a, bit, it's a bit cold, we have some cold days, but for the, for the slow, slowing riper grapes, um, that the, the, the slow or the longer winter or, and, the, and, and the perfect winter actually helped the grapes for this harvest. So we might have had less grapes this year in the harvest, but more better quality grapes comes from it. So I'm looking forward to try 2022 harvest in, in, soon or well, in, in, a few, in the future, really. How long will it take, uh, Gerard? How long should we expect to receive a bottle of the 2022? Well, it depends on the grape and the style of wine you're going to produce, basically. So um, if you want something ready to drink and easy to drink, mostly white wines, um, you can see it very quickly uh, on the market. Not that I'm always a big fan of that. I, I believe that sometimes white wine should have also a little bit of time. Uh, the high, high, high acidity grapes, especially, that they give them a little bit of time to relax uh, and get into character. But if you're looking into red wine, you're going to do uh, at least a good 12 months before you're going to see some really good vintages, the 22 vintage coming through and being released. So it takes a good period of time to, to mature um, uh, and, and to, to go through processes in the winery. You, you know what's going to happen this evening after Tina has finished rugby practice? They're all going to head to the pub and then Tina's going to go and get a round of wine. <laughs> He's going to come back and, the guy's and give everyone go. a glass of wine. And they're going to go, hey, what, what's going on here? Where's our beers? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's the, that is the beauty. Wine is not for, for mm. just the older generation or, or, mm. or, or the connoisseurs. The wine is there. And my great-grandfather my great -grandfather was quite a big, big um, um, what's the word? someone who, who, who believes in wine is for everybody. And even I believe younger generation also could enjoy wine. Uh, and there's different ways of enjoying wine and there's different mm. things you can do with it. Um, and nowadays they start bringing wine in, in, in tents. And I don't know if you've seen a lot of that, you know, in, in South Africa, it's even a bit more coming through than over here. Um, and it's quite nice for younger people mm. to go to the beach with or go out to picnics and you can have a tin of wine. Um, so, yeah, it's quite interesting. That's still a bit weird for me, though. <laughs> <laughs> and I must say, like, as a student here in Stellenbosch, since we are in, in, in a wine environment, um, most, most of our students, we do like going out, let's say, on a Sunday afternoon or Saturday afternoon or even Friday after class and go to the wine farm, like the Speed Wine Farm, Lanzarote here in Stellenbosch, just to visit. And I feel it's 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 nice. It gets us socializing together there, the wine farm. And there's like a difference between each and every setting, each and every um, wine that you drink to. So, yeah, I must say I also do enjoy some, some wine tasting, although my knowledge in the wine is still not... Um, like where you are <laughs> but we I'm, all I'm, learn I'm, we, we learn don't <laughs> yeah about everything and, and we were talking oh, about everything. it earlier it's about mm. being interested um then you take the time yeah. to learn also 
But you also perform That's at some That's wine bars. Um, I haven't performed at, at some wine farms here in Southern Boss, but um, I think I'll, I'll have to start doing that um, in the future um, just for a fun end. Yeah, I think I would enjoy that. So, so speaking of performance, because I think it's only right if anyone's attended one of our Time to Wind Down celebrations previously, um, when we have a musician joining us, the musician tends to um thinking about the tin does was it what it says on the tin right it it provides or well, the musician provides something musical so tino i wonder if it might be possible for you to share a song mm. for us. <laughs> oh no anytime internet it all first <laughs> anytime um, my internet is, is breaking up a bit here at the hostel, but I'm sure you guys can hear me now. Man. Yes, we'll I take a want... chance. Anything we can do to listen to you sing, it's amazing. <laughs> anytime, anytime. Let me just grab the, the tool, the instrument. <laughs> <laughs> um, my internet is a bit bad here in Stellenbosch at the hostel, but I'm sure you guys can hear me now. Okay. So this song um, I wrote last year while I was in the hostel. Um, the power went off, yeah. <laughs> it's going to the power, and I decided to, to write something because I was in the mood to write something. Um, like this. The Fizzler from Yo's Talent Boss. See, not for you. I don't can you. And it don't go for my creator. See, not for you. And it's great for you. Van jij als mij alles in mij eis als ik daar is, zo mijn baby, ik breng voor jou een mindy, een mindy voor liefde. Zal ik nog een keer in jou kijken? Want dit is aan die brand. En daar, op signaal heen, waar ons huis voelt. Yes, 
to my baby. Thank you so much. <laughs> really good, Tino. Really good. Now, can you help those that have joined us today that may not be Afrikaans speaking, um, or like me that didn't do very well at Afrikaans at school? Could you <laughs> could you help just tell us what the story is behind the song in English? <laughs> yeah, no problem. Um, so the story is basically about um, this girl that I like. This is a true story. And just before I could take her like out on our big date, um, I think you were hearing the song. I say, "Dad of Signal Hill." I wanted to take on a picnic there with a nice basket. Um, yeah, just a basic picnic. Um, just before I could do that, we yeah, things ended between us, and yeah, the song is for her and not. Yeah, I wrote the song like it's like a letter to her and not uh, about about her, if I can put it that way. So yeah, that's just in short what the song is about. Quite sad, I must say. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, don't want to say bring the I don't want to bring the sad vibe, but yeah, that's the uh, more or less the story behind this song. <laughs> so are you still friends? Yeah, we are. We are still friends. Um, so I'm just glad we are still friends. Um, for me, it's. I think that's quite an important thing when things end between two people. Um, I feel there must still be a relationship um, in the future and stuff. And yeah, yeah. we're still talking, we do our guard and stuff. So really grateful for that. <laughs> Has she heard the song? Not, not, um, she hasn't heard the song yet. And I actually recorded the song in Pretoria last year. And yeah, I don't think anyone has heard this song ex except the people like from Frank Musik and my roommate. Um, I actually just played to him so that you can hear like if he can relate with the song or what he hears and stuff. So for me, it's very important just before the song like gets released and what other people also think about the song. And yeah. That's gorgeous. Oh, we approve, I think. <laughs> we approve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, song. thank you so now, much. Now, if anybody that's single and is hearing this song and wants to get in contact with you, Tina, how can they do that? <laughs> <laughs> you are on social media, aren't you? Of course, you are. They can you're, on, <laughs> you're on Instagram. Yeah, you're on yeah, Facebook. Yes, um, people can so find you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm on Instagram and Facebook, um, TikTok. I've been playing there um past few months um but yeah my socials i think everywhere it's tino um, underscore music so yeah i'm very easy to find there and anyone can contact me any time of the day i do like um interacting with um everyone who likes music or everyone who wants to know something so yeah always available i won't necessarily reply as soon as possible because with the studies and stuff i'm not um always on my phone but I'll try my best to get to you as soon as possible. Oh, very yeah, cool. I, I sound so professional now, but yeah, <laughs> just um, sharing the information. Well, well, fantastic. Well done again. It's, it's not easy playing online. And, uh, and I know so, I many musician, so many musician friends that have set up some really good studios. And I would just tell you to just carry on mm. doing it, you know, carry on experimenting. Because the world becomes a smaller place mm. when you can start to do this, as we're showing with time That's to true. wind down. It's amazing. That's true. We Don't still you... have one question mm. for Tino as well. Go on, Michelle. Oh, okay. It's part of the quiz. Yeah. Last question of the quiz, number five. <laughs> um, which well-known South African singer, songwriter, is known as the father of Afrikaans rock? The father of Afrikaans rock, the person that came to my head now is um, 
oom Anton Goosen. Ankel Anton Goosen. <laughs> <laughs> big, a big favorite for and a lot of people. Yeah. <laughs> I must say, yeah, I really set like a um, nice bar or level for all the um, artists that we have today. So, yeah, um, I do appreciate his music too. And um, I think I'm just going to share with this uh, with you guys too. I have a, I recorded a full length album um, last year, end of the year, and actually covered one of his songs um, on the album. And I hope people are going to like it when it comes out in the future. When is it coming out? <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't have a date yet, Michelle. Um, but I'm sure the album will be coming out this year. And yeah, I've got a single that's coming out tomorrow. Um, I know, we were talking about it earlier. <laughs> I'm so excited to you. <laughs> I've got a single that's coming out tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like I told people, I'm very excited. So everyone can also be excited. Um, it's a cover of um, Trans Karua, really old song um, with our own twist. I featured with um, Henning Hubert. So yeah, I just I'm looking forward to the to the song and how people are gonna relate with it and also interact with it. Like I said, it's a well known song, so it's gonna take some of the people from the older generation back to the like good old days, if I can put it that way. <laughs> Exactly. Do you know, know Transcode, um, Andy? No. No? It was a series. Um, Gerard and I were reminiscing before you guys joined us about Transcode specifically. Mm. It was an Afrikaans series. Actually, 1984 is when it came out. So it was a little bit before Tino was born. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, it's a fantastic yeah. series um, to watch. Yeah. As, as children, we grew up with that a little bit. Um, but a few years ago, actually, they released um, a movie on uh, uh, of the series. And uh, my, my wife is um, British, and um, she actually watched it with me with the English sub subtitles. And Andy, do yourself a favor and go watch it. It's really brilliant. Yeah, definitely. So then you can and it's a gorgeous see, song. And it's a gorgeous song. And yeah. then you can see a little bit of what this trans guru about. Yeah. 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 Now, thank you very it's much. Amazing. <laughs> that that's my that's my weekend's entertainment then, all planned and sorted. Thank you, Gerard. <laughs> now now Gerard, Michelle, we've gone through all those questions, have we not? We've covered them all. Mm. So Gerard, what remind us the competition again to our wonderful audience. Competition. Yeah. Is there a competition? Do we have a competition? We have a competition, yes. Well, if, if you've listened live, you would know the answers already. Um, and you haven't li listened live, then uh, you will find it out when you watch us afterwards. But um, uh, uh, and the competition will release after the um, uh, 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 chat today. Uh, we didn't want to put it out beforehand um, because of the quest. But um, the competition is if you can answer all five questions, well, if you listen to us, you would know Latino answered most of them uh, and you would have the answers. Tag time to wind down in your answers on our social media. Uh, give us the answers on social media and um, you will stand a chance to win a beautiful bottle of wine. Um, it, it won't be the 22 vintage, but something from, from the repertoire um, and um, some two VIP tickets to one of our events to see here. So fantastic prize to win. So hopefully people will join in and um, take part in the competition. And I think for people, Michelle, coming back to if people want to follow us, I mean, we, we have socials. We have an email subscription um, opportunity as well. People can follow us and we'll send them emails. Not but too maybe, many, though, either. Not, no, God, no. We, nobody <laughs> likes too many emails. But when we have an event and we want to let people know that we've got an event coming up, we'd love people to sign up to that. But maybe you can just run through the best way for people to connect with us, Michelle, if that's okay. Well, I put a link in the description of the video already, see, um, with all our links on. So we're on Instagram, on Facebook, we have an email list. We obviously all have different things that we also do. So we get, you know, we, we do as much as we can, but we'd love to hear from anybody that's interested maybe wants to share their story, their music, wants to find out more about our guests or anything like that. So the link is in the 
description um, at the bottom of the video. And it's time to wind down or twine down, I think, um, on Facebook. And the nice is we've got our YouTube channel where people are watching us now on. So And, and everyone's going to subscribe, right? Because yeah. we, we have to say, push that subscribe button. I think that's the standard thing that you need to do on YouTube, right? Subscribe now. Go and push it now. Go push subscribe. And the little bell thingy as well. So when you push the bell thingy, every time we release something, you get ding, ding. That'll come up on your phone, right? It's very important. Definitely. That's very important. And, and they can also they will, can also buy some wine from Pearl Wine Cellar that will support Time to Wind Down. Yeah. Um, and we will put some more bits about that on. Now, I was going to share a story, but I'm just very conscious of time. And I know Tina's got to rush off to a rugby match. But what, it, <laughs> no, what, just... what I was going to say is this week, we, we well, yeah, we, we're talking about the harvest of the wine. Um, there's a wonderful <laughs> Zulu story that I have told in the past. And credit to the amazing South African storyteller, Nina Moshlope, for the story that I read in one of her books. And it's about a young Zulu girl who grows up in an incredible environment of, of safety and love and hard working. And, but there's something that's missing in her life. And the one thing that she's not allowed to do is play the Mbira, the, the Kalimba or Thumpiana. Now, the Mbira you probably know it a lot 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 I mean, you've probably played with yeah. one tino and I, I i had the pleasure of playing on a zimbabwean made uh Mbira, and it was it was a fantastic instrument unfortunately it did not belong to me and when i actually priced this and i established the value of this Mbira, it was around 500 euros was was the the value of this Mbira. so if you come across any um proper really um full scale in bearers they are worth an s you know they're worth quite a lot because of the time that they take to make mm, I mean, to make yeah incredible these guys will sit with little thin metal rods and sit there the whole day hammering out one key um but they are it's a beautiful beautiful instrument and i've got this i bought this um little kalimba um and i use this when i do my work and i go into schools and do storytelling i use this and I, it's a wonderful instrument for for that story but going back to the story of of kitiwe the king the zulu king at the time he outlawed that women were not allowed to play the mbira because the mbira was could only be used by the men because it had the power of talking to the ancestors and and what i love about this story is there's a particular scene in the story where kitiwe is given the gift of the of the mbira from the ancestors but interestingly enough, and this is what I love about folk tales and stories, thinking about the story, the way she has presented this gift is from a hand, an arm that comes down the river, and the hand is holding the gift of the Mbira, which just makes me immediately think of the woman in the lake and King Arthur and Excalibur, right? And you're thinking, you know, it's, it's mind-boggling, which I absolutely love about stories. Um, but the story, I don't want to share the whole story, because what I'm going to do is... I'm going to tell this story at our next organized event. Not one of these Thursday sessions. The next event we have, I'm going to share the story of um, Kitiwe and the Mbera. Um, but yeah. At, Watch the um, space for when it's coming out, our next event. And yeah. So. Well, soon. We will be confirming <laughs> soon, those details. Definitely. But, so, uh, but guys, amazing. Here we are it, coming to the end of another wonderful Time to Wind Down Tino, an absolute pleasure having you with us today. Thank you so much. What? Thank you so no, thank you so much to you, um, Andy, Michelle, and Shara. Um, was thank you so much for the wonderful opportunity to be here with you guys and to meet you guys too. And I must say, I was really excited to see Michelle too because yo, the last time I saw her was I was like she was saying I was still a toddler, not not a toddler, but I was still a child. And you were yeah, a little boy. I, I was telling Karat you were a little <laughs> boy because we were selling our furniture when we moved to, and this is my last memory of seeing Tino. Yeah. <laughs> we were selling our furniture, and I know his mom Jane um, very well. His aunt Margaret looked after. Well, Tino's mom Jane was the first woman that I ever entrusted my own child with. <laughs> She looked after Joshua for a little bit and then she got the job that, she, that she's doing now at a, a guest house in Swellendam. 
uh, she's running the guest house there. And um, her sister Margaret took over, and Margaret is now part of my family. My, you know, <laughs> I I love that woman. <laughs> she is just amazing. Um, and Tino, uh, his mom and dad, I think they bought the couch or something like that. They came to fetch the couch, and um, they were standing in the, in our living room. That's the last time I think I mm. saw Tino. He must have been <laughs> years back. Uh, this, this high. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's time for you to come and visit Michelle I or other way around. I, I must come and visit. <laughs> yeah. Do not worry because time to wind down is going to be going on tour to South Africa. Oh, so perfect. That is the, That's the best news. <laughs> that is the plan. <laughs> Guys, it's time we say goodbye. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you for joining us today. Everyone that's joined us. And if you're watching this, um, at another time, um, please do connect with us and let us know let us know if you love south african wines perhaps south african foods as well it's another part that we want to bring into these thursday lunch times is talking more about south african foods as well so perhaps if you've got any ideas or any things that you would like please do let us know so it's bye bye from me andy cops bye bye everyone thank you tino amazing to see you Thank you to you, Michelle. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Gerard. Oh, good All luck. the best. And we look forward to hearing more about your music and we'll help spread the word as much as we can, Tino. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you so much. I'll do the same from my side. Excellent. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't bye -bye. forget to subscribe. <laughs>